Deep in the system of the Nordlead 1 and 2 hides an experimental waveguide synthesizer also known as Pella Mode. This is how it seems to work. It resembles a single string resonator struck by an exciter, bouncing into fixed objects and sustained by filtered feedback. The heart of Pella Mode is the resonator. Comparable to a string, it has a general tuner knob that ranges three octaves. Why is there no sound? That's because the tuner knob is locked in its silent position at zero. Open the tune lock knob to the left to free the tuner. Any other value will lock the tuner into place. Press the center button at any time to reset the tuner automatically to its central position. The general tuning can be affected in three ways. First via MIDI note. The keyboard sends MIDI out, however one semitone below the key pressed. Secondly, the pitch bender can affect the tuning by three semitones up and six down, and it is MIDI controllable, unlike the rest of the functions. Thirdly, the fine tune knob does what its name suggests and ranges over four semitones. The harmonic offset forces the harmonic structure up or down. The cleanest sound lives in the middle, and turning the knob either way leads to increased dissonance. When turned below the middle, the sound may collapse or migrate to a digital artifact intrinsic to the algorithm. Filtering in Pella mode operates similarly to flageolets or muted harmonics found on string instruments. The damp position knob sets the location where harmonics are muted. Refer to this table for approximate values related to other harmonics. In summary, the central resonator determines the character of the string. It features a harmonic offset best kept scented, a tuner with a securing mechanism, and a harmonic damp position that produces flageolets. Yet, without excitement, the resonator stays quiet. The exciter section generates noise bursts that strike the resonator like a pluck, ping, glitch, or bow. MIDI notes trigger a velocity-sensitive pluck that can be shaped in various ways. The pluck on-off button activates or deactivates the pluck. When activating Pella mode, the pluck is on by default. The low mute button toggles the pluck between two dynamics, a default sturdy pluck and an optional thin sharp one. The pluck position knob determines the place where the string is plucked. At the extreme left and right, it sounds slender, nasal or sometimes absent, reminiscent of plucking a string near the knot or bridge. The pluck softness knob is rather ambiguous. It relates to the texture of the pluck. At the left end it emits a fleshy tone. At 5 there's a pronounced click, and towards the right it takes on a more brushy quality. Another ambiguous knob is the pluck impact frequency. It sort of behaves like an attack, but not quite. At the left position its frequency is fast, and it gradually slows as it approaches the right. The single ping triggers a modest high pluck with low amplitude. The string must be in motion for the ping to take effect. Additionally, the scrape knob delivers serial pings on a rotary dial. The modulation wheel manages the intensity of the bow. This function is not well balanced and runs out of control fast. The damp position knob also sets the bow's position. Since the end positions express the knot or bridge, the bow only works between position 1 and 126. Lastly, the resonator can be excited by a glitch. When the resonator's tuning mechanism jumps from zero to any other value, it automatically springs to life, creating a dispersion sound. Alongside the exciters, the string can make bouncing noises into two fixed objects that can be set by distance. The object distance knob sets the relative distance between the string and the objects. At the lowest position, the objects tend to touch the resonator. At the right side, it travels out of reach. The fret position knob indicates the location where a metallic object obstructs the string. The sound is pronounced with significant distortion. The neck position knob determines the location where a wooden object obstructs the string. It generates more gentle overtones. The resonator stays active longer with filtered feedback. This works in two main ways. Firstly, the pluck feedback section determines the decay and release feedback when a pluck is triggered by MIDI note on off. Pluck low decay controls a low pass feedback upon key press and produces a deep tonal sound. The scale is exponential and becomes meaningful in the upper half of the dial. The pluck low release knob controls the feedback once the key is let go. The pluck high decay controls a high pass feedback when a key is pressed. 
It relies on a low frequency wave to vibrate properly and yield high harmonic rings. The high release knob sets the feedback once the key is let go. Secondly, unlike the pluck feedback, the harmonic feedback section works independently without MIDI notes. It stimulates both the encouragement and suppression of two harmonic spots on the string. Both spots are controlled by the feedback amount knob that sets the degree in which the filtered signal is sent back to the resonator. So why do we hear nothing? Because the feedback knob is inverted. All the way open to the right it delivers no feedback, while closed to the left it's at its maximum, but there is still no sound. That's because the harmonic damper and exciter cancel each other out. The feedback damp sets a spot on the string to attenuate the harmonics. The feedback exciter targets a spot on the string to amplify the harmonic presence. Before use, remember that the main volume control is turned off. Adjust your amplifier's volume to the lowest level. The output is extremely dynamic. To activate Pella mode, you need to enter the birth year of the programmer. Set slot A to 19 and slot B to 6 to 5. Then, press and hold together shift and system. Next, hit the clear button followed by the manual button. Now the system switches. Return to normal functioning by pressing system once. Pella mode is another manual mode, therefore it performs by the physical positions of the knobs. It can't save patches directly. However, pressing shift and the manual button in normal mode sends out the knob positions through MIDI. These can be captured using free software like MIDI Monitor. Press shift and LFO one waveform to display and dial in the parameters as you desire.